How should you program mobility work to improve your mobility and your muscle connection? Watch this. Our next caller is Amy from Ohio. Hi, Amy. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, been following you guys for a really long time, probably since like 2017. Uh, only been the past year where I've been really trying to dig down into uh, getting back in shape. You guys said something back a long time ago about fixing what got you there. So I've been working on that over the past year. Um, I'm 57 years old. I'm 217 pounds now down from 230 over the past year. I've been doing anabolic and starter off and on really over the past six months, really stuck into anabolic really well and figured I needed to switch programs. I've done suspension in the past and it was okay, but I really like the weightlifting. Um, I'm not very um, sports like I don't do a whole lot of sports. Weightlifting has always been kind of my go-to, so I kind of like it, but I got COVID and it really brought to mind how bad my mobility is. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe I would do MAPS Performance because that's the next program. And I know it's very mobility minded, but I'm having a really hard time with the mobility sessions and trying to figure out like how I could do those from home because I'm I haven't gone back to the gym recently, um, how, how to get into the best form. I, I just, I really struggled with it. So I was thinking about trying to find a way to do MAPS Prime Pro in place of the, the mobility sessions in the um, performance. And I'm not quite sure how to program that. I don't know if I should do, like, I know all of my areas are weak, so I didn't do the compass. So I don't know if I should just take a couple of exercises from each one of the areas and do those on the mobility days four times a week, or should I program a different set of exercises four times a week uh, and add those into the, the performance mobility sessions? I, I, I'm just not sure how to program you them too. Have you gone through the uh, webinars, the one that Adam did specifically with uh, Prime Pro? I did. How did that go for you? It, it actually went better than I thought it would. The shoulder one, really, I, I think I struggle with the most. Um, the, the combat stretch, I do good with that. And the 90-90, I do good. But um, I, I think my shoulders were probably the worst out of all of them. Mm-hmm. I would follow that. Yeah. I would literally, I mean, because like, can you do that in your living room? Yeah. And I, I pretty much am going head to toe on you. I think I hit some of the most problematic areas for most people. Those are some of my favorite movements from Prime Pro that I love. And instead of overcomplicating the process for you as far as like how to program it in there, like just follow that. Yeah. I think you'll get tremendous benefit from trying to just progress and get better and better at that. The, the more you do with that, the better you're going to feel. And so just plug that in. Yeah. If anything, I would say just that, um, you know, in between your maps uh, performance to replace for, for the mobility sessions. I love that idea. And then I would just add like the wall press because of the shoulder issues, um, you know, from from just prime. So uh, that other webinar, I mean, I go through that one as well with Doug against the wall. Um, and just to constantly, this is a constant thing. So as much as you can think about it, even throughout your day at work or, you know, finding yourself a wall or something to do to, to kind of try and reiterate, um, you know, that, that type of mobility, it's, it's all about teaching your body that consistency, like we need to figure this out to, to regain this, this range of motion and function again. So, uh, the more times you can find yourself doing it, the better. Yeah. Amy, I, you know, your, your question about programming would look something like this. Okay. I would pick, you know, four or five movements from prime pro and I would do them for consistently for five to six weeks. And then you could probably change to uh, some new movements, but you want to stick with the ones that you're doing because I originally you had said, do I change them up each time? Like, what does that look like? Just like with strength training, you want to do your core lifts and get really good at them before changing into doing something else. Otherwise you, you never really get past that learning curve, that hump where you can really reap the benefit. So whatever you pick to do, do that for like six weeks or, you know, eight weeks until you feel really good with them. And then you can move to something a little bit different and then stick to that for a little while. That's a great way to program mobility work um, on your own. Yeah. And we're, we're seeking a different adaptation when we talk about uh, mobility versus like building strength, uh, building muscle, losing body fat. It's different. It's a different. So I, I don't remember the total amount of movements we have in prime pro, but I believe it's over 50, right? It's, it's quite a few. Might even be more I, I, I literally use four, the same four. 
all the time. Like that's, I do not rotate through all of those. We did that for a variety for people. Yeah. And that, that way some people will notice that, oh, this one really helps me out a lot. So that's good. I think it's good to have a nice variety for everybody. And we can address very specific joints issues and things that way. But for you, just the broad strokes are going to be better. Yes. So, I, I mean, and that's what I mean by telling you that is like, I, I stick to the same four that I feel the best from when I do my combat stretch. I notice a huge difference in my ankle mobility and my depth of my squat. When I do my 90-90s, it totally eliminates the bursitis that I had in my hips and makes me be, get down in my – I feel great. When I do the handcuff with rotation or the wall press that Justin's talking about, oh, man, my posture is so much better. Like So instead of like trying all the different ones and overcomplicating, I, those help me the most, and I can continue to just improve. I can never do enough of them. So I'm always just trying to, to do those. So hopefully that helps. By the way, I love that you love strength training. I mean, I think that's yeah uh, a, a good, that's a plus. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on the, the weight loss this year. That's yeah. phenomenal. That's yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Now with the programming, the only thing I worry about is, is that the ones that I'm good at and I feel are easy, I feel like it's kind of a cop out. Oh, no, like, no, 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 no. I should be doing the ones that are harder in order to get better at the ones yes. that are harder. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, good. To, yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, if you're doing it and you do it easily, like let's say, the, okay, let's do the 90-90, for example, because you did say you like the 90-90, the sound like it was. If you do the 90-90 and you can elevate your heel off the floor on both sides, say six inches plus, no problem, you're probably good there. Yeah. yeah. But if you're not, if like what what I would look be looking for as a coach, especially with ninety ninety, is your right side you can get off the ground three to four inches or whatever it is, but then the other side you can't. Mm -hmm. There's that tells me there's a huge discrepancy from left to right. That'll normally cause a lot of pain up the kinetic chain up somebody's body. So then I really want balance. So when you're doing some of these movements, especially when they're left to right movements. The ones that should stand out to you are the ones that are like, oh, wow, this shoulder movement on the left side I can do, but the right side, I'm all fucked up. There's a there's a flag right there that, oh, you really need to address that. But if you get down on the 90-90 and you lift the heels up on both sides and it's pretty equal and you feel pretty good there, you're, you, that may not be a focus for you. Drop that and move to one that you're right, that you're having a hard time with. That's going to make a bigger difference. Okay, cool. All right, excellent. So, and by the way, for people who who are listening, the two webinars are primeprowebinar.com and mapsprimewebinar.com. So, thanks for calling in, Amy. We appreciate we appreciate yeah, your support. Thank you for your help, love you guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks thank so you. I love hearing from uh, from listeners in that age group who are you know working out, and especially that they've been listening to us. They love like, lifting weights, especially if they've been listening to us since uh, 2017. That's so dude. great, you that's, know that's so yeah. great. She's got to have a cool ass personality. I know. Yeah. If you if <laughs> she you stuck around, yeah, yeah. With if, you're, if you're if you're 57, yeah. So she was in her 50s when she found us. If you were in your 50s and you found us and you hung on, like, you're my people. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we weren't our best back then. Yeah. But you know, when, when, when it's true, when you do like, look, the same rules with strength training apply with mobility. In other words, you, you do an exercise and you practice it often and you get good at it before moving. And trying something different. That's the same thing with, you know, these mobility movements or, or correctional movements. Is you want to get good at them. When you're really good at it and you master it, and then it's, then maybe try something a little bit more. Yeah, and it's it's cool. Yeah, it's that she noticed that intuitively. It's like, yeah, you want to focus on the ones that are most problematic, and and that's really what the compass tests are there to highlight. Is like you know the most restriction and the hardest time you have with uh, some of these movements. Like let's really focus in on that and, and present that throughout your day as much as possible. The only reason why I don't like comparing it to strength training and the, the adaptation process there is because most likely if you find, you know, say three or four of these exercises you're really bad at, you're probably going to spend most of your life in those. Just mm -hmm. real talk. You're not going to move out unless you're a mobility guru person who love like that's what. Well, they I mean, do. I'm, I'm squatting the rest of my life. I mean, there, there's fundamental movements that you'll find for yourself, and you're right, you'll stick to them for a long. Yeah, time. Yeah, and you, there, to me, there's not. You don't even though we we provided all those different mobility drills for people. Unless like you came to me and you're like you wanted variety and you want to expand and you want to keep doing more, but to be honest, I have struggled most of my career to get my clients to do three or four of these yeah. yep. that will help them the most and just be... And you don't want to overwhelm or, or confuse them. Yes. You just want them to adhere to something that works. And and so, yeah, some of those main movements, it's just, it covers the basis. Totally. Yeah. 